Joseph. You know what the problem is? Is that uh, we blamed it on fat, right? And then yeah. we said, oh, no, it's sh- it's carbohydrates. And, that, and that's all, okay, no, so sugar. that's all been debunked. Well, but here's the thing. And then they'll say it's salt. These are right. all the things that hurt you. Mm. But the reality is heavily processed foods are high in all those things because that's what makes them palatable. And you eat more calories when you eat foods that are heavily processed. So, that's a fact. It's summertime. You know what that means? Time to get shredded, which is why I'm going to give away the shredded summer bundle. Okay. Here's what you get for free if you win the contest MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Hit, MAPS Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide to help you with your diet. Okay. That bundle for free, but you got to do this leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. If we pick you as the winner, we'll notify you in the comments. You'll get the shredded summer bundle for free. By the way, everybody else, that bundle, which is normally discounted, is 50% off. So you can actually sign up for it if you don't win and get half off. We are also putting Maps Hit by itself at 50% off. Okay, so you can find both at mapsfitnessproducts.com, but you have to use the code June50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. The obesity epidemic, there is one main culprit. It's not fat, it's not sugar, it's ultra-processed foods. If you watch the consumption of ultra-processed foods, you can line it up right with a graph and shows how the more of those we eat, the more obese we have become. Mainly You've said Doritos. that before. <laughs> Mainly Doritos. Yeah. Yeah. You've said that before, but Mainly I don't know Doritos. if I've ever seen that graph before. Yes. I don't know if I've seen one either, but it does. <laughs> <laughs> but you keep saying it on the podcast. No, 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 no. <laughs> If you look at the like the percentage of our diet that's made up of heavily processed foods and I mean I I, I agree with you yeah. and I think that makes total sense but I don't know if I've ever seen somebody pull up a graph well, that shows you know what that. the problem is is that uh, we blamed it on fat right and then yeah. we said oh no it's sh- it's carbohydrates and, that, and that's all okay no, so sugar that's all been debunked well but here's the thing and then they'll say it's salt these are right. all the things that hurt you mm. but the reality is heavily processed foods are high in all those things because that's what makes them palatable. And you eat more calories when you eat foods that are heavily processed. So, That's a fact. So, okay, when, what year, it, what year, I mean, we've been processing food for forever, but what year did it like explode? Like when did the- It when, really start to become a did, part yeah, of our yeah, lives? Yes. It started to really kick up in the 70s, really. You had TV dinners, which kind of became a thing in the 50s yeah, It had to be 60s. related to the microwave, right? Uh, microwave made a big- Made a big uh, part of that. That's also, been for a long time though. Yeah. Also, um, dual income households grew quite a bit. So traditionally, you had one parent at home, usually the mom, and she usually prepared meals. When both parents work, convenience became a big factor. We need food to be convenient and easy. Heavily processed foods entered um, into. Are, are you two hunting this down right now so I can make yeah. sure Sal's not lying? No, I'm not lying, bro. Yeah. This is 100. Mm-hmm. percent well, well, we know we know for a fact that it's excess calories. We know it's not activity. We we used to think it was oh we're not moving enough, but we we show that that doesn't make up that big of a difference. It's that we eat too damn much, and the best studies on the show that people eat six hundred more calories a day just from eating heavily processed foods. That's a big difference. That's well, the deficit that we put people in when we're trying to get them loose body. It's fat. always been in the food like certain companies best interest to get you to keep consuming their product so like all of their science and efforts went into like having you not just be able to eat one and be satisfied but eat uh, multiples and get through the entire uh you know chip bag or the entire uh food so you could go back and you buy more dude do you know how many potatoes are in a large bag of lays potato chips like eight no it's like five oh. four or five most nobody could eat four or five plain potatoes most people couldn't do that all in one sitting, but I know a lot of people that could eat a whole bag of chips. No problem. I know I could. Yeah, yeah. So it makes that big of a difference. It'd be interesting to see how much the average American's diet is made up of processed seventy percent today. Yeah, well, I, and so where I was going with that was the how that's changed. Okay, where was it ten years ago? Where was it ten years before that? Where was it? You know, forty years. ago? That's a ago? good thing to look up. I'd yeah, say, I think that would be a really good thing because that up. would that I think that would whether you yeah, these guys look at they can't find graphs. Doug's having a hard time. I see over there. You know how to Google? Yeah. You know no, obviously. Andrew, I don't. you struggling too? Maybe Sal's a liar. No. Yeah. No? no. No. I, I, I have. I have visuals. me. I, pro- I, I, yeah. I, I yeah. dare you. I have one graph, but it's not exactly what I want. You could just look up what percentage of our diets is made up of heavily processed foods over the years, and then maybe we'll find um, some numbers. But wow, what's that? That's obesity. I mean, obesity is just like skyrocketing. And what year Since did you 1960? See- we see. Yeah. And that's really about the time that you know ultra processed foods became 
really yeah, prevalent. I mean, Doug, Doug, what else happened though? Doug, like, when you what, were a kid, what else that was what else that was crazy from the '60s to now? That's well, changed? I mean, there was the low fat fad that you know what they did is they added sugar instead of fat yep. to food. Uh, the other thing was the use of high fructose corn syrup. Well, yeah, well, sugar, I mean, sugar is literally in like, like what do they say, 80, 80 or 90 percent of all foods in the grocery store? Well, yeah, mm-hmm. all these all these things that Doug is talking about are ways of making food more palatable and processing them more to do so. But I mean, that's that's exactly what I said. Like, Doug, when you were a kid, do you remember how much of meals were heavily processed foods versus today? Well, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but my family, you know, we basically, my mom cooked everything. So yeah. yep. going out to eat was actually a treat. Yeah. You know, it's funny. If you look at Europe, their obesity rates have obviously taken off as well. Italy um, actually did pretty well for a long time. Now, my family's from Italy and Italians are, and the culture is very centered around homemade food. They tend to be food snobs when it comes to food. But now their heavily processed food consumption has gone up as well, and their obesity has gone up. Doug, you, when, when, when was the, the Twinkie and the Ho-Ho invented? Oh, those were old. Oh, that's pretty old, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, okay. So then but those, that wasn't a majority of a person's diet. I know, but okay. But I mean, those okay, those things have been around forever. Now, you so you think it's processed foods more than it is like the lack of exercise and movement that's for people? Been, that's for sure been, been proven. For sure. They've tried to connect it to activity and that doesn't make Because if we had all the same amount of processed food, the chips, the ho-hos, all these things that we had in the 40s and 50s when kids were outside playing and doing things, you think that we would still see? You would still, you would see uh, very close numbers. Probably a little different, but you would still see very close numbers. Yeah, because you got to think that the huge spike is not a single thing, right? Technology has played a role. Right, Atari came in what the '70s, mm-hmm. so kids weren't even glued to television well, before Doug, the before the '70s. Doug, that graph right there with obesity, what year is it where it really started to take off? Around 1960. No, no, no. Well, oh, it, yeah. So it was probably around 1990s. Okay, uh, it really started to do the really start to take off. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, that, we should have the answer for this. Is our generation? Huh? You really, you really started to see the explosion of uh, both parents working. And convenience became a huge thing. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of meals that were in boxes. I mean, I, that, I mean, I know that was for our family, right? So like, uh, what was that? What's the truck? The Swanson truck? What's the truck that goes around the frozen? The, mm-hmm. the, the guy that Swanson. drives it? Is it Swanson? Yeah. Did you guys ever get Swanson? No. Yeah, no. my family got Swanson. We had bagel bites. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that was it's Costco like supplied all That was that part stuff. of that. Yeah. Swanson did bagel bites. They did corn dogs. They did frozen burritos. And those were all became like staple things in my house. And it wasn't when I was really young. When I was really young, my mom made dinner almost every night for us. Mm-hmm. And that was pretty – and she still made dinner a lot because my mom listens to this. My mom was amazing. She made lots of dinners. Okay. Um, <laughs> you, you must have gotten in trouble nice for, caveat, for your mom. Yeah. I, do, I can't always get busted for my mom. Like, That's not true. You're exaggerating. Okay. Okay. But we did have the these frozen yeah. foods. That I, I remember. That's when it got introduced to me. And then I remember when I was on my own. That's what I lived off. Well, of. Well, dessert sure. was also a food group. Yeah. Yeah. Back then. Like I, I noticed that it was like always like you had a meal, but then you had dessert after the meal, especially dinner. Yeah. Well, you know, it's an inter- another interesting place to look at is Mexico. Mexico obesity was non-existent, and then all of a sudden exploded and now Mexico is one of the most- uh, Well, that, I thought they'd connect that to, to Coke. Sodas. Sodas. Yeah. Sodas and heavily processed foods. Their, yeah. their heavily processed food consumption and soda consumption was like zero. And then all of a sudden it became a, a part of the culture. That's and interesting. Their okay, so Doug says the 90s, were, the, the Pepsi Wars went in the 90s, right? I think so. Mm. Was that was the, that, the, the that Cola was the, Wars? Yeah, the well, Cola Wars. Soda definitely had to have been a factor in the whole thing with in combination. With Doug, look up process. Mexico's I, obesity that's a really, rate. Okay, so like, when did like v- like soda vending machines get really popular? Like, that has to be like have 80s ever, and 90s. You ever right? look at the size of a yeah. Coke from the 60s? Well, okay, you ever seen that? Have you ever, just not that, Coke, fries, burgers, everything. Oh, it was yeah. the serving size. What we consider a small today was like an extra large or bigger yeah, yeah. back back in the 50s so and 60s. So also like like 7-Eleven was big in my family. So we'd go like after church or whatever, come by big gulps and then like double gulps. And it's like, you're, you're almost drinking a full like two liters of no, like they have, soda. They, 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 they have, I have, I took a picture when we were, when we had Mind Pump, when we first started, uh, I, I stopped at a 7-Eleven, I haven't been in one in forever. And they had, I forgot what it was called, but it was, it was a fucking gallon, dude. 
<laughs> like a refillable. Well, it has a handle. I've yes. seen that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it was this big. I took a picture of it on Instagram yeah. when it first, like, this was what, seven, eight years ago or whatever? Yeah. Dude, if you, if, in, if for anybody who denies this kind of stuff, if you have it's kids. So unhealthy. Like, I have a, a, you know, my son's 19 months old, right? And we don't give him <clears throat> lots of this stuff at all. We just don't eat a lot of it anyway, but especially because he's a little kid. We were at a party over the weekend. He never drinks juice, let alone soda. Yeah. I don't even think he's ever tasted soda, but he's never had juice. But we don't get, have juice. We drink water. And I got one of those uh, Capri Suns. Yeah. So at the party, I had a Capri Sun. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm going to have him taste a little bit. And he attacked it. Like he put the straw in his mouth and he's trying to get the whole thing. And I take it out of his <laughs> mouth and he's like, wants to throw a tantrum. Yeah. And I had to finish it myself so that he could have a tiny bit and be like, oh, we're all done, buddy. And you can see the look on his face. He's like, oh, I want more. I'm like, oh my God, it's powerful. Yeah. It's powerful stuff. Well, and, and, and it's compounding, right? So, like, you introduce it to them at that young of age. And I think, and you know, uh, not trying to condemn any parents that did this and stuff like that. But, I mean, you introduce it, you know, like, in, oh, it's so cute. It's funny watching them do that. And then they get used to the Capri Suns. And then that's, that's like, that's like becomes water to them. Mm -hmm. And then they need the next level of sugar to get that same sensation and then they get that and then they need the next sensation that's how you end up with these gallon big gulp wow. drinks because of how much you need what does that what say it? there for uh, for mexico doug boy well, look at the growth of that yeah i'm looking at the there. graph between 1975 to 2016 and around 1975 the obesity rate was probably around eight percent and in 2016 more around 30 percent that's Mexico. That's Mexico. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that was, remember they, what was the whole Coke thing or the, 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 the Pepsi going there? Oh, I don't know when they started making a big, a big, um, push in there. I do know that I talked to, okay. I don't remember who it was. It was a trainer, fitness expert who spoke Spanish. We met them at one of these events mm -hmm. and he was starting, he was thinking about starting a podcast and doing it in Spanish. I thought that was a great idea because it's, you know, Spanish speaking countries, like they really have a need for this and a desire. And he was going through some of the stuff. And he goes, it's crazy how much, he goes, obesity was not even a thing a few decades ago. Whereas here in America, we were talking about the obesity. We've been talking about obesity epidemic for a while. He goes, it exploded over there. And he goes, and, you know, soda became a part of the culture. Mm -hmm. Like every meal you serve soda. So he's like, I really want to, you know, create this for Spanish speaking countries, in particular Mexico. Do you believe we correct it? That we're going to reverse it? Yeah. <sighs> I don't. Boy, I don't, I mean, I don't know how. Yeah. I mean, I if, how. if you've ever had, have you guys ever had anybody in your family or dealt with addiction at all, like drugs and stuff like that? Have you ever had it? Do you guys have anybody close to you that you've seen it like firsthand or anything? Um, I had a friend, but not, not family member. No. I have. It's like, it's a crazy, unbelievably powerful thing to watch, right? Mm -hmm. Like just how, how much it takes over somebody's life, the things that you do, you know, just to get your fix and things like that. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about drugs, right? Things that we, we've uh, uh, socially demonized and uh, yeah. are bad. And food doesn't have that same you know, uh, label as no. drugs do, but yet could potentially harm you the same way if you abuse it and overconsume it. So this is the reason why I don't think that we correct it is because it's still celebrated. We don't look, nobody looks at food right now right. and goes like, be careful that like cocaine yeah. or heroin or pills or anything else like that. Nobody looks at it like that still. Well, look at what you're doing. The worst you get is when you go to the grocery store and then check out and you got like a pint of ice cream. Like, oh, <laughs> you, you treating yourself tonight. Like, I didn't need all that. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I'm just like, uh, Well, yeah. I'll give you guys an example of how challenging this is. There was a study that was published. I go on sciencedaily.com. Great place, by the way, to look up studies. And there was a debate over ultra processed foods, which to me is always like, really? A debate? So I'm pretty sure one side is accurate. The other side is funded by heavily processed food companies. Sure enough, I read the arguments, okay? On one side, the argument is studies show that people consistently overconsume when their diet is made up of heavily processed foods. Very true. They've done some of the best controlled studies on this, and it averages out to about 600 more <laughs> calories a day, which will make you gain a lot of weight in a short period of time. The opposing argument, you ready for this? The opposing argument was, well, you know, plant-based foods, which are really good for us and good for the environment, are, are often ultra-processed, you know, because you eat like a, a fake meat product or whatever. So they're trying to argue that those are healthy because they're plant-based and that, therefore these are okay ultra-processed foods. So should we, we shouldn't demonize <laughs> them as things that are unhealthy. It's This is what wow. makes it so challenging because then you get the average person who who's, hears all this information and says, you know, okay, let's have dinner, guys, but we're going to eat healthy today. So mm -hmm. instead of regular nuggets, we're going to have vegan nuggets. 
We're going to have pizza with no meat on it because it's all vegan and we're going to, it's going to be awesome and we're going to be so healthy. So people are so confused about, you know, what, what's going to help them. Do you know, I read, I read a a thing on uh, vegans, you know how, what percentage of people that uh, do the vegan diet go back? Oh, it's a, it's got to be a large. Is it like sixty percent, eighty two. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. Double, double check. It's like eighty two or eighty four, eighty. It's eighty you know to eighty four, somewhere in that range. Because the majority of people do it because they think it's going to improve their health and lose weight. Yeah. And the only people that stick to it are the, the ones that have like moral, ideologies attached to it. Yeah, like like a real strong moral. Eighty four percent. Eighty four. Eighty four percent. Did you, okay. yeah? Did you also see? So this this might get a little touchy, but it's all right. That's vegan. Or vegetarian. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's a majority of people who think they'll doing it to lose weight or to improve their health. They don't have any real moral. Yeah. They watch a documentary and then all of a sudden they think it's a smart Like people who do it because they really, really think that it's better for animals and they really don't want to hurt animals. They're they're more likely to stick to it. I still think there needs to be a market for like vegetables that are actually made out of meat. (laughs) <laughs> um, they, there's been funny memes of people done that. You have like this broccoli that's just right, like bro, sculpted meat. Bro, this is this, brown. It hey, look, this tastes good. just like broccoli, but it's made like, out of sausage. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so just you just look more virtuous that way, you no. know. But you're not quite. <laughs> you pretending. Hey, yeah, you're not quite <laughs> vegan. You're, you're eating a, you're eating a salad, but it's made out of. Beef. Yeah, they're like, oh, you're doing so good. Yeah. <laughs> that's hot. Dog. I am doing good. Thank this, you. Yeah, this is no. You okay? So this might get touchy, but um, a. A, a disproportionate percentage of people who are vegan have uh, mental disorders like um, anxiety and depression, more so than people who are eat omnivore uh, type diets. There's a couple theories as to why. One has to do with the nutrient deficiencies that yeah. are more present in uh, vegan diets because vegan diets require you to have more variety to make up nutrient imbalances. Is this where creatine kind of helps to address some of that? Could be that. It could be the B vitamins are very common, low iron. There's certain nutrients that are harder to get. That's why uh, vegans often get encouraged to take supplements. Um, so that's that. And then the other yeah. one is this, is that someone who may feel is more likely to be anxious or depressed, maybe, this is a theory, may be more likely to attach themselves to an ideology like veganism to say, okay, well, th- I'm doing this because this is better for whatever. So those are the two theories. But th- but studies do show a greater percentage have those things. So you know, since you brought up processed foods, I got to bring up this article that I read. I, I, were you guys in the room when I was sharing about Dippin' Dots to Doug? No, no uh-uh. you know I've never had Dippin' Dots. Oh, really? Yeah. They're, what is it? My son like was talking about that the other day. He's like, "Oh, I want to try that." They're like freeze. It's like freeze dried ice cream balls. So it's like when I was a kid. <laughs> have you guys tried them? Just ice You've cream, never tried but it's smaller. Have you tried them before? No, I haven't. Oh wow, that's great. Yeah, Doug, yeah. have you tried them? Yeah, I've had them once. Andrew, you tried them? Yeah, of course. So I've definitely it, seen them, but I didn't, hold on. Is I didn't like, get the hype around Is this it. like when I ate astronaut ice cream in high school? and uh, in Oh, yeah, school? it is kind of like that. Remember when they bring you yeah, the- it's freeze-dried? The, yeah. Yeah, and, and it kind of dissolves in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah, it has a, it's, it's super cold, dissolves in your mouth, and it has the flavors is of whatever. Is it good? Yeah, it's all right. Like, I mean, you know I'm an ice cream guy. To, I wouldn't consider it like gourmet ice cream, so it's, okay. you don't catch me I doing it. I always thought it was weird. Like, so it just you? dissolves. Is it even satisfying because it kind of- uh, Not as satisfying. That's yeah. part of the reason why I don't like it either, right? You have one of those- uh, you, they, they, they sell them all the time at games, like ball games. So that's uh, where I've yeah. had it. Like at Are they baseball, less messy, maybe? Yeah. They're, oh, they're okay. less messy and they're whatever. They're fun at a hot baseball game and you have these frozen, you know, okay. dipping dots you can have, whatever. Yeah. But anyways, my point of bringing that up, it's what sucks you guys haven't had it because then this conversation is kind of stupid, I guess. Uh, the business model. So I, the article that I read, did you look it up, Doug, after I told you about it? I'm looking up uh, now. I can't seem to find it, though. So, so uh, how they make most of their money has nothing to do with ice cream. What? What? So they're a, they're a massive. They sell spoons. No, <laughs> they're a massive like uh, manufacturing for freeze dryers for massive companies, like huge, like quarter million dollar machinery that they supply for companies that need like free of uh, like freeze dryer machines or whatever. Right. What, what do you call those? I don't know what you call it. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea what you call those massive refrigerators. The machines that make the the, the dipping dots. Well, not just dipping dots. Anything that you would freeze dry, like uh-huh. lots of things get. So free. that's how they make a majority of their money. Yeah, the all wife- of it. If the Dippin' Dots thing is just like a byproduct of- so You can pack of, and ship food a lot easier with the free yes, dry technology. Yes. Yeah, like you have huge places that that's how they store they store their food. I yeah. mean, when we receive, I believe our butcher box comes in uh, a freeze- of, No, no, they freeze it, but then they put dry ice pack thing in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, ice. how do you think the dry ice packs where they store all these big packs like that? That's Interesting. They get, they get stored in like a freeze dry- And that's how they make their money? Yeah. I always wondered how huh. profitable some of these, like a, a Dippin' Dots location is or whatever. 
You ever, you ever wonder that? You I'm all, I am. All, I always wonder about businesses that you look at and you go like, how do they make money? Remember we, remember we had that discussion? I think we had yeah. it on the podcast about the, the hunting store. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense to me. Oh, I, you're talking about- And um, I know people, okay, we brought that up and people DM me and they're like, well, Adam, it's like the biggest hunting- Bass Pro. St- yeah, Bass Pro shops, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we know that, but also- it still like, doesn't mathematically it, make sense to an me. an outrageous amount of square footage uh, to- Sell product like come on you don't yeah. need all that and the bu- and the build on it and the yeah. mar- and the margins have and to you don't be- have to pay to get in right because yeah. at that point like you build something that grandiose you'd want to have like a mission fee or something to like cover you know what places always make me wonder that we'll go somewhere nice like we were in Carmel a few weekends ago Jessica and I were walking through the nice town Carmel's expensive place right a lot of like tech billionaires and millionaires will buy a house there because it's on the beach. Gorgeous, right? Yeah. And we're walking through the town and I see- Clint Eastwood's a mirror. I, yeah. Huh? Is that true? Right? Is what happened? Me? Is it not- That's a, um, uh, not Carmel. Is it Carmel, Doug? Do you know? He's a, He is near me. I know that. Who, but who's this? Clint, Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah. Mayor. He's uh, Carmel. Yeah. Yeah. Let's he's a mayor there? He's a mayor there? No, he was. Oh, he a was. A long time ago. Oh, interesting. Well, I only know that because uh, I actually uh, serviced his house uh, and uh, we re- reglazed the windows. I know before you come, you know, interesting. In, with a different uh, job title that I, <laughs> yeah, I was, you serviced. Yeah, was, yeah. I'm here to glaze. So yeah, I was, I was a glazer yeah. back in the day. No, I mean, so we're walking through the town and I know it's expensive to have a, a shop near the beach there in that oh, nice yeah. downtown. I yeah. know it. $20,000 minimum a month. Super right? expensive, minimum. right? And I'm looking yeah. at these shops. I'm like, candles and crystals. Okay. Like uh, how yeah, the hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. is this lady or whoever? Making how are they supporting themselves? I mean, the margins are crazy. Yeah. So I so last night I went and picked up. I don't so care how big the margins. She ain't selling thirty thousand dollars of the candles. Oh, somebody bought her the store. Yeah, and then there. There's a brand. Maybe it's a tax. There's a brand of ice yeah. cream right now that I buy. That's it's twenty dollars a pint for ice cream. Why? It's it, well, it's like with the, it's all this homemade, and it's, I told you what, it doesn't flare up my psoriasis. So it's like they sweeten it with honey and all these like natural ingredients and like. Hardly anything in it that's processed. Like it's all natural. Of and course, it, you would buy twenty dollars ice cream, dude. I, it's not just me. It's, it, I, I had to wait in the line. What? Yes, twenty dollars ice cream, a pint, bro. Now is it delicious? for those like you know Ben and Jerry's? It yeah. costs you like yeah, yeah. like four ninety nine or three bucks or whatever like that. Twenty bucks a pop. Now for is those. it good? It's amazing. Wow, it's amazing. It's that is weird. Revival ice cream in Monterey. They ship all over. I've actually been trying to get the owners because I've been eating it now for like a year. I found it last year. And I was amazed by how I've, I've told you guys before. Like part of why I can't mess with ice cream is like it'll flare up my psoriasis really bad, and yet I love it still, right? So I'm always on the search of like alternatives, and a lot of the alternatives are just bleh. It was like, tell me, dude, I can't have dairy. You know how annoying it is. Yeah. Every time we go get ice cream for somewhere and there's an ice cream place, I'm always like, I'll get the dairy free option, and it's always like, and their dairy. By the way, they're it's dairy, always like raspberry their, sorbet. Their oh, dairy free options bomb. So uh, they what have, do they make it with? Uh, Doug, will you pull up the ingredients so I don't mess up exactly what's what's in it? Um, oh, look at that one. It's got cookies on either side. Yeah, like what's their shtick? Like, it's just because it's that good, or do they like make it a, a different way? It's well, it's it's homemade. The ingredients yeah. are all natural and organic. Like so, and it's and it's in Monterey, your Carmel area, yeah, right. right? So you're talking about these areas that where people are can afford to pay. Twenty dollars for ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a mistake the first $500 time. I, for gas. Hey, I the yeah. very first time I did it, I door dashed it and I got a, a hundred dollar bill and I'm like, oh shit, I must have put like forty of these things on. There. I went back and looked. Four. Like, yes, I got, <laughs> I got oh four God. of them. I was like, what the hell? Dude, That's crazy. Speaking of expensive stuff, uh, you guys see gas over here in California? Dude, it's almost it's seven dollars like a gallon for premium. Insane. I heard it's. I heard in L. A. It's eight now. What? Yeah. So here's what I wonder: ten, How are people? Because a lot of people live... How are people still driving right A lot of people save barely enough every month yeah. to save a little bit. How are they doing it right now? Yeah, no, if you're commuting, you're, that, that's killing you. I mean, you, if you are if you live within five miles of your work, not such a big deal, right? You're just going to have to limit how much you're driving outside of that. But, boy, if you have to commute to work... Dude, this has got to be making a massive impact on, on people. And- well, you, you know what they're doing? We were talking about this earlier, is rather than raise the price of products, they're just making products smaller. Yeah. So like you'll go buy toilet paper. Yeah. Oh look, the toilet paper is the same price. It's one third like less. Half the size. They're doing yes. that with everything. I know. It's and it's you know it's super sneaky. You start when they noticing do. it. Oh yeah, your bags of chips, your toilet paper. You're saying your toothpaste. Lots of air being wrapped. Well, nobody even days. thinks about it. like I have. I mean, do you have an idea what your guys' regular toothpaste? How many ounces is? Because no. it's a weird ounce. It's like four point seven. It's yeah. never. It's never like a an even number. It's weird. Yeah. So you know they shave off point five. 
wow. off of all these things and and then on top of that raise it too raise it a few hey, a little bit and then shave it hey maybe bit. hey maybe the silver lining we we're talking about obesity earlier people are gonna walk <laughs> everywhere and they're they won't even less. notice it. it's like wow i'm like yeah i'm doing great yeah i'm losing I'm weight losing i mean weight. what i always do yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm just walking more maybe i haven't if, changed if, anything if extra toilet paper and toothpaste is making people fat oh, man. <laughs> Dude. hey speaking of uh speaking of foods i wish i could eat and i can't have dairy and all stuff oh so our sponsor magic spoon right i wish i could have it i've tasted it. it's delicious yeah. but it's got whey protein and i can't do dairy i know you guys eat it all the time they, an article in Pop Sugar. So they just wrote an article on it. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Pop Sugar. I've heard of it. Yeah, so they wrote an article on it and it got rave reviews. But it's it's gluten free, grain free. Um, let's see, gluten free, grain free. It's got obviously very very low carbohydrate, no sugar. Yeah. And the protein is whey and casein. It's literally a bodybuilding supplement in. In like kid oh, cereal, yeah. they barely, form. they've barely. Remember when we first got, yeah, we started really working with them. That, uh, they are now market yet. They are. Oh, okay. Yeah, remember when? Remember when Sal made a big deal about that when we first started working with them? Like, how is this not in the bodybuilding community? I'm like, no, it's not. And that was back when I was still around it. Yeah. Um, and I remember watching, like, waiting, to, and I we sent some of our friends. I, I actually sent some boxes to them to to try that were bodybuilders, but now they're they've sponsored a bunch of. Oh, yeah, is that so, it right there, the article? Yeah, because yeah. I remember the protein yeah. cookies and the uh, the, you know, the donuts for a while were crazy within like the bodybuilding well, community. Yeah. Well, it was so, like cereal is like a, a huge one. Well, so the sweetener blend that they use is monk fruit and allulose. So these are uh, you know very, very low sugar types of sugars that you find, certain fruits. Um, so you get that sweetness, but zero, like almost zero you know grams of sugar. Chicory root inulin, which is a prebiotic fiber. So I don't know if you guys ever look at the box, there's fiber in the cereal from this and tapioca starch, which is gluten free. So when they do add a little bit of the starch, mm. that's uh, what it is. But yeah, they got rave reviews. That's cool. Which is kind of cool. Max so what it. was the cover of the uh, pop sugar? Was it Justin Timberlake or, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not getting it. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm not getting the joke that you're trying to pull. <laughs> Over Pop Sugar, dude. Like, what kind of magazine is that? I was going to Oh, yeah, dude. Those are the old. I just see it, the one that you're like. And, 17. Exactly. Or, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Boy Pop, Crush. It, Pop Sugar is actually, I think, it's a fitness magazine land. or fitness article, right? Is that, Doug? Where do they come from? I don't know. It says fitness, this particular article. How did you find that? But Google. they may report on all types of things. Besides <laughs> you just, just Google them. I got on the Google. You got on the Google? And I looked yeah. it up. You yeah. are I just the feel like it's like Bieber no, or somebody. It's about, is on you are there. the best Google. It is kind of, a, I think, like a People magazine. Yeah, thing, it's like maybe? everything that's cool or happening right now. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm like, why are you reading that? Yeah, that's all. No, I don't okay. I don't subscribe or anything like that. I just oh, okay. I, I looked up news on uh, Magic Spoon because I know we we're going to talk about them today. <laughs> Yeah. And I saw this article and I it's saw good this. Cut, it's good. a good cover story. Yeah, yeah. Did you read the did you uh read the or watch the YouTube video I sent over to you that the Thomas DeLauer guy did on HMB? I got sent a bunch of people. Uh, you know, HMB I always defer supplement stuff to you. I didn't even watch myself. Let's see, HMB, I think it's hydroxymethylbutyrate. Maybe you can look it up, Doug. Uh but it, it's a it's a metabolite of leucine, the amino acid leucine. And we know that leucine um is a muscle protein synthesis signaler, right? So it tells your body to build muscle. Leucine is one of the branched amino acids. And in studies, so HMB, let me see, hydroxymethylbutyrate. Oh, good, I remembered. HMB is an interesting supplement. It's actually one of the most studied ergogenic supplements yeah. out there, probably second only to creatine. That, that much, huh? Lots of studies. Now, here's the interesting thing with it. People who supplement with HMB, um, they tend to be stronger, have more muscle, or lose less muscle when they're dieting. But in a very high protein environment, doesn't make a difference. Um, in comparison to leucine, not that big of a difference. Now the studies are promising. I've used HMB fifty times because studies come out and I go, okay, I'm going to give it another shot. All right, I'm going to give it another shot. I never can tell. I can so never it, tell when I take so it. So is, is it is it a, is it hmm. derived from a protein? What is it? It's a metabolite of leucine, the amino acid leucine, which so, is part of a makeup of protein. Yeah, yeah, and, and so that okay, so that makes sense to me, right? So when these people tout this supplement. More likely, it's where they're seeing these crazy results or claiming these crazy results are like in the context of low protein Correct. type diets. So they'll take every they'll take people supplement some of them supplement with HMB, yeah. some which don't. we know the average person is under consuming on protein as it yeah. is. But take somebody who is dialed nutritionally or is consuming enough protein or over. You're not going to see. I don't think you'll see a difference. Uh, now, I where the value it's like, it's like reminds me of like branched chain amino acids. Exactly. Right? Like if you are yeah. What's what's a branched chain? Leucine is the most important amino acid in the branched chain amino acids. Right. Same thing. So yeah. you give so BCAAs, in a, in a, and that's where that gets it. Okay. Exactly. You give BCAAs to people who are consuming you know low protein diet. They notice a difference too. 
You bump the protein though, and it doesn't make a difference. HMB tends to be one of those types of supplements. Now, here's the value I could see in it. It's easy to add. So in other words, uh, I've seen them add HMB to um, some of the meal replacement shakes that they'll serve in, um, what are they called? Those homes for like retirement homes. Uh Or they'll give it, uh, some hospitals are starting to use HMB in their shakes for people who had surgery. And in that case, I could see value because they're not eating a lot of protein to begin with. Right. Adding the HMB can help. And so I don't say uh, there's not no value, but I, like I said, I've supplemented with so many times and I just, I don't, I've tried high doses. Yeah. I know I've gone way over what I'm supposed to just to see what I, what happens. And I've never noticed anything. Well, this is what makes <clears throat> creatine so awesome when you talk about You can tell when you take it for well, sure. Well, not only that, but even if you, in the context of a high protein diet, you still will see a difference yes. with pr- taking creatine. Where a lot of these supplements that get a lot of attention, me, m- many of the times that you see like all this, this great response that they claim from it is due to somebody lacking something in the diet. For example, like, okay, I rave about ne- uh, Mellow all the time. With for magnesium, well, I, part of the reason why it's so amazing for me, you're deficient. I, I, yeah, I'm not stupid. I'm, I'm I'm deficient. Yeah. So me taking now, if you're somebody who gets enough magnesium, you take mellow, you're probably gonna feel shit from it. Yeah. It ain't a big deal to you. So to me, that's what it's like. I, the studies that show vitamin D raises testosterone when people supplement. Yeah, well, when you're low, low yeah. vitamin D, right? And you're deficient. Yeah. So I, I think that's the the thing that you when you're when because the the people that attra- get attracted to these type of supplements are like your muscle building community and stuff like that. And if you're already the kid who is hitting one point five grams of protein per pound of body weight. You know who I used to recommend HMB and, and branch chain amino acids to? My vegan clients. So I had clients that were vegan and the legit was a better diet for them. I, again, there's you know lots of different people and some clients just, they felt better eating that way. Usually not, but these clients did. And getting high protein for them was tough. They would have to supplement a lot with plant protein powders and stuff. And it was just kind of tough. So I said, hey, let's supplement with branched amino acids around your workouts um, and use HMB and they all saw phenomenal results, but that's because their protein, you know, it was like a, it would be like a, let's see, one guy was, he was an anesthesiologist, one of the smartest guys I ever worked with, by the way, love the guy. His name was Mike. He was a vegetarian and his protein intake was probably around, he's like a 200 pound guy, tall dude. He probably ate like 70, 80 grams of protein a day. Um, so for him, BCAAs like made a huge difference. He noticed a tremendous difference. Yeah. Now, if he was eating 150 grams of protein a day, it's not gonna. It's not gonna make that big no of a difference deal. at all. No. So it depends who you are. Uh, that's where you'll see the value. You know, type of deal. Transitioning out of fitness and nutrition, uh, did you see the article that I sent over to you guys in the group thread about the forty-year mortgage? Oh, you called it, didn't you? <laughs> you did. Yeah. Right, yep. I got it's an e- I got an email from one it's about of time our- you called something. I feel like that's why I got to point it out because or else you forget. You know no, what I'm saying? Like, no, no. Oh, that's one for Adam yeah. again. One. Hey, did you hear I've been one thirty times? Yeah, I've been one thirty times. No, I mean that's crazy, dude. Uh, how far are they going to go with this? You know? Yeah, you know, I saw another article too about like the future is like uh, fractional home owning is the future. There's a couple companies that blew up over the last decade. They're too. just trying so hard to prevent. How House prices from going down, and the the truth is, we 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 kind of need the correction. It's it's. I mean, yes. if you care about the average person, that is, if you're already the wealthy and so that you don't give a shit, right? And if you don't care about other people, right? But well, if you own your house for twenty years, you don't want your home value to go down. Yeah, no. But I mean, it's it's moving out of the reach of the majority of people. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's you yeah. real soon here. I mean, God, where we live, like you can't find a shack for under a million. No, no like, it's depressing. Yeah, I think you know your kids trying to like stay here. No, well, way. yeah, and nope. and you and now and the loans are tougher to get now than they were 10, 15 years ago. So you have to, not a lot of people can save two hundred thousand no, dollars. Saving two hundred thousand dollars in in an area where you you know like this, the income you have to make to even save. Bro, what that. are you gonna do? You're gonna buy a house with a forty year mortgage. You're thirty. That means you're gonna have a mortgage till you're seventy. And hopefully the value keeps going up, so that maybe you could do uh, you know some kind of a reverse mortgage when you retire. Yeah, like, but you know what though, we we've we've taught Americans that you don't buy a house to to pay it off. You buy it for the write off purposes. You buy it off for as an investment. That's how people buy it. So yeah. they don't even look at it as like you don't buy it. Go oh, I'm going to be seventy when I finally pay. No one thinks like that. I'm going to buy this because oh, they know over the course of 20, 30 years, it's going to be worth more money. And so you're thinking I'm going to flip it and it sell can't it keep then. Going, though. I mean, I agree. I mean, I think at one point the the bubble does have to the burst a the little bit. The problem is that there's like nowhere to go. There's the, everything bubble. Everything's a bubble. Market, it's a bubble. The houses are well, a bubble. Well, we're also moving in this time too. We've talked about this before also that 
where you know ownership is becoming less. I mean, look at the companies now with uh, cars, you know, like r renting high end cars uh -huh. like that, and yeah. zip cars that you see around. That's the World Health or Airbnb, wait, the Airbnb. World, uh, Economic Forum, right? Isn't that yes. what they said? Yes. yes. Yeah. Airbnb. I mean, we're the only country still that it, like home ownership is as big as it is, right? Isn't everywhere else uh, much, much, much lower compared Most to Most places. Us, right? Yeah, I know. So, yeah, right, probably. You're more world traveled than, than I am, for yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we're one of the highest when it comes to like home ownership. Most places are renter nations, and I think we're just going to move into that direction. That's wild. Forty year mortgage. Yeah, I mean you're you're signing you're signing up for a long, yeah, crazy, it's a long journey, long yeah. crazy commitment. I mean it's there's they're doing. But they have, they have. I mean, what tricks do they have left? They, if they raise interest rates too much, we have so much debt that we won't be able to pay back the debt. What they're doing right now, this is why they're going to continue. This is why I don't think they're going to ever permanently end their quantitative easing, aka printing money out of thin air. They're going to keep doing that because the only way they can continue to pay off their debt and continue to tear is to inflate the currency. Yeah, you, so they can either tax you directly. So this a lot of people don't realize this. They can either tax you directly or they could tax you indirectly by making everything more expensive by devaluing the currency. And that's what they're doing right now. Yeah. Is so, that home ownership? Yes. So we're 65. Yeah, we're way down the list. 65%. Uh, Really? Uh, the highest home ownership is in, where was that? Wow, Romania. China's almost 90? Romania, wow. Laos, Hungary, Slovakia. Let's see if there's anything. Well, look at the big countries. So, so wow, China, 89%. China, Russia, almost 90% of people in China own well, their home. But you got to well, consider, though. Yeah, wait a second here. We got to consider, though, with China, where they were 30 years ago, where they are now, mm -hmm. that that, of course, is going to explode. Because 30 years ago, China was a very different country economically. So that makes perfect sense. Russia, Russia, same thing. Yeah, I did not know. A lot that. of these are like I thought we India? were. I thought we were the highest. We're well, the in highest, the Western world, we're we're probably one of the highest. Spain is a little higher than us. It looks like. So we're like one of the lowest. I was yeah, way off way on, down. I was way off on that. Interesting. I did not know that. Interesting. I'm glad I had you look. Wow. Well, let's see what happens. Dude. Yeah. yeah. This be interesting. So maybe we're going to be the first to move into this like renter renter nation. Uh, in comparison to everywhere else. I don't know. It's Maybe a scary I'm, thought. Oh, well, I mean, is it? Who knows? I mean, I guess if people are happy with it, I I wouldn't be. It's an opera. Look, I'll tell you what. It's an opportunity, in my opinion. Uh, it's an e it's an interesting bet, right? You could buy properties now, betting that everybody's going to be renting in the future, and buying properties will be almost impossible. So you'll be one of the first person. You'll be one of the only people that has. These properties that people can rent from. Well, that's the that's why the theory is that there's all these this all this yes. institutional money that's that's in single family. Yep. Yeah, that, that are, never happened before. Right. right. That's that's what some of the theories and rumor is that some of these uh, are like some of them were are obvious we know about, and then some of them are institutions that are that are pretending like to be in, are yeah, pretending to be individuals. Yeah. So they'll they'll like email someone like that has like a, a real estate portfolio as if they're a, a family. Who's you know trying to move in this area, but they're really like like a, like a Blackstone, like a big institution. Interesting. But the person who's supposed to go out and go find these properties are targeting houses and stuff like that, and they're they're posing as if they were a an individual or a single buyer. Yeah, because I, mean, I don't know how much truth there is to that, but well, I'm sure because think of like um, if you're the the seller and you have options in, in that range like if you're going to give it to uh, a company versus like a, a family so that's the theory be more pulled to the family so i could see them trying to mask that on some level so that's a, that is the, the that's exact exactly right that's the theory on what because someone might go well like, they're trying to avoid the political pressure to that like, too both yeah. right so there it's but it's justin's point is the point that they make why that's being done like why would it why would blackstone do something like that well it's because exactly what you said i'm a seller I, i'm going to make my money no matter what I'm moving no matter what. What do they they send like? Uh, oh, I guess you don't meet them, right? When you sell your house, you <laughs> like like them. fake Olin Mills picks, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, no. me my it's not even that. They, oh, it just it's just that simple. They send over an email, say, "Hey, my family and I are interested in moving to this area. We love your house. This and that. You know, could we we were and and because everyone's getting so many offers right now, they they you know go towards that one, wow. thinking that it's an individual, but really it's not. It's an institution that's going in a bar. Hey, I, I got to tell you guys, I got uh, I had this. Funny conversation with Jessica. Almost got in trouble. Thanks to you, Justin. What? So she gets in the car. <laughs> she gets in the car and we're driving. And then she reaches down into the side, you know, on the side door, there's like a little space, space where you could store things or whatever. And she pulls out these sunglasses and she goes, whose sunglasses are these? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, those must yeah, be. Yeah, I left those there, dude. I'm like, those must be Justin. She goes, this, these are girl sunglasses. 
I said, no, they're not. What? I said, I said, those are Justin's. Dude, those are not and she's girl like, glasses. These are not guy sunglasses. These are girl sunglasses. And so we went back and forth. I'm like, <laughs> rocking some juicy couture. Like, text what do you got, dude? What do you got, dude? I'm like, text Justin oh, right now. Some Madsons. I, I wear black flies. Like, I don't wear it's like curly a, ass <laughs> fucking it's like a brown. frames, dude. It's like they're a, big. I got a big ass face. <laughs> they're like, it's got like a brown, like, it's like frame, you know. Yeah. With a, I can't wait for my They're book square, me, dude. They're not like those big round. <laughs> she literally thought it was a old like, lady. Like, ones, you know, yeah. girls will wear those big, like, yeah. Kind of, yeah, that's what she thought. I know exactly what she's thinking, bro. We went back. I'm like, can you? I said, we will text Justin right now. There's not a girl wasn't in my car. Yeah. You know how I got her? I said, put, try putting him on your head, and she put him on. She's like, oh yeah, they're Justin's because his head's like this wide. <laughs> Why well, did I knew that? Because you and me originally we were getting our Felix Grays. You had like Nash or whatever. I, I put those on, and they were like little <laughs> spectacles yeah. on so, my face. I was like, son of a bitch. Hey, so Nash, like, Nash is what I wear, and I, you know, I got a real narrow, narrow face, and I have to wear small glasses. So I, can just I didn't imagine. even account for that. <laughs> what are these Justin's like? like what are these fucking other glasses? <laughs> hey, yeah. what they, hey, like those. What are those glasses that they, you know, they just pin right here? That was like. <laughs> Monocle? Yeah. <laughs> it was a monocle. Yeah, dude. I like oh, that. They look like they little reading glasses for him. I like that. Felix Gray's, have you seen their Faraday? I like those. Did you? Do you, I, like you, I, you I, I can only feminine. do Jemison. I think they're too feminine. Fit my face. Pull like the Faraday's up, Doug. I, I like bought them. Faraday's originally thinking that I would like them when they came in. So did you guys know that? Oh, you guys knew this. You all, would totally like All Faraday's. their glasses are named after like scientists and physicists and so, so fair yeah, I like remember the most when, brilliant people. Right? I remember when what's his face said that right, the owner when we had him here on the show. I thought that was so that was so cool that they did that. I I think they should highlight that more and market it. They don't mm. even talk about it. Yeah, I didn't even know. It's so cool. We have all these brands, the names. I never we once have like, like Edison's. Yeah, I'm so dis. I, like, how did I not like start, go like these names? Yeah. So, put put the black ones. Oh, Faraday's. They don't look like they're, they're, yeah, they do. See, comes to a, so that point. How they come up? Uh, yeah, see, those are chick glasses. They got the little yes. like cat kind yeah. of features. Yes. I guess you can do that. Come on, guy. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I got him. Masculine. I got him, and I gave him to Katrina right away. I was like, "Oh shit, I can't wear these." <laughs> hey, I just thought it was funny. I should have went. Oh, I'll give him to Sal. He'll wear them. <laughs> I just thought it was just funny. Need a little eyeliner to wear. No, I, yeah. I thought it was hilarious because it's just because she goes to put them on her head, and like one ends here, one ends over <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. and then she's like, "Oh yeah, there ain't yeah. some. Either it's Justin or some big ass head girl came in your yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, either way. Well, they you know, that, you, you know, know there's funny. you know there's like uh, there's like rules. To, well, not, like, they're not rules, but there's like uh, when you when you buy trying to find like sunglasses or glasses that yeah. like shape to your face you're supposed to do the opposite of what your face is so i have a, huh? I, have a I have a fat round face right we always talk about that mm. so like square narrow lenses look better on someone like me round glasses don't go well with a round face if you have like too a, much round someone like sal who has kind of like a chiseled and narrow kind of face like that and he can get away with like round, uh, round. i'm waiting for you to say beaky <laughs> I was thinking around because of his nice. owl-like features. Was, thank you. See, I was, I was waiting. I you have bird-like <laughs> yeah. yeah, bird yeah. features. Yeah. You can get owl glasses. Yeah. Shut your face. <laughs> yeah. I, I just take my Jabba face and put whatever the fuck fits Jabba. on it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I take two glasses. Oh, just, I, I put them together. Yeah. Just just, smash it you, in you a big head like Jesse, yeah. you wear ski goggles. He <laughs> He wears, that's where that trend came from. So, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. where that he came wears a from. Guys, big I never heads. got into that. But yeah, yeah. You guys with big ass heads. No, you know, I for me, you know, the challenges with glasses uh. is that I, my head is a bit narrow, but also they'll be too far from my face because <laughs> you're right, my nose does push it out. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll be like Off out your here, beak, <laughs> so you can see underneath. You know. Uh, good times. Uh. Hey, speaking of funny stuff with wives or whatever, <laughs> did you guys see Babylon B sometimes? They oh mean, God, they did bro. the uh, they did the podcast. They're, they're one. my favorite. Did you see the podcast when they did? No. What is it? I repo oh. I reposted the podcast one that's that somebody posted. I thought it was Yeah, so no, there good. was one that said something like uh like uh and this is I sent it to Jessica because it's so this is so us. It's like man mystified by the appointment that he has to make that his wife told him about every day for the last 30 days. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and it was that's like so the, accurate. The guy's like confused, like I don't remember today. She's what? like it's a, that Just is today. That is Jessica and I every that's time. Hundred percent. That's. I'm great. like, what are we that's doing today? She's like, the thing, you know, whatever. I'm like, what? you know, Why what, you, you know tell what I, I've been telling you this for. You know what I'm so guilty of is like getting mad too about it. What's going on? What is it? Yeah. Why it's would been you in your calendar for three right weeks? Now. I've literally reminded yeah. you every single day that you're mad at me today. Like, oh, why, why, so is this, this is, why is this a guy yeah. thing? What is that? I'm so guilty of that. And then I'm so guilty because of being like, top of why mind, would you do dude? it on it's this always, day? <laughs> yeah, it's always random things that like, like, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, it's not on my stack of priorities, you yeah. know, but it's on their stack of priorities. Yeah. So it's, it's like, like number one. Do you guys, do you do this? That's what I do. I just, I'll show up. Just plan it. Yeah, just whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no, it doesn't I'll work. be there. 
doesn't yeah. always work. But I saw it. And I'm like, oh, this this doesn't just happen to me. Apparently, no. I made a meme about it because it's so <laughs> it's very it's so accurate, very common. Anyway, yeah. another thing for you, Justin. Uh, <clears throat> did, okay, so you uh, you I've shown you guys this before. The cheese rolling race they do. I don't know where they do this. Uh, yeah, they roll down the I, hill. I think it's in uh, and they Scotland, chase they chase after say. it, mm -hmm. right? So you can watch videos. Of, they chase after it, and it is. Not like a normal hill. It's a cliff. No, and the, the the challenge is is that they can like literally run down this vertical cliff. Like and hill. people break their yeah, arms and they just and tumble with it, and their body just like flops all the way down. And yeah, there's all kinds of injuries. And the award is the bro is the cheese. There is no money. You win <laughs> the cheese that went down. Like the hill. I get it. You know, is that all they get? I thought they get it like a prize or like a trophy. That's or it. It's oh, the is? cheese. Bragging oh. rights. It's and a cheese. big a big wheel of cheese. My kind of. Anyway, there's this American American girl won it, and she's getting like famous because of it. Really? Maybe what? Doug could look her up. Yeah, um, I don't know. It says in the in the title it says American, <coughs> a, a woman from North Carolina. She won the annual cheese rolling contest in the United Kingdom, and I don't know. Apparently, she's attractive. I don't know. Her name is Abby Lampy. Maybe you could look her up, Doug. A B B Y and then L A M P E. She be fearless because that hill is uh, like that grade is, is like this. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering. Like, I'm, I'm I'm trying to look her up to see how how like attractive she really is. I'm wondering if she's attractive or <laughs> in, she's, in that setting. Yes. <laughs> like, think about all the people that chase after cheese down a hill. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I'm picturing them. Yeah. yeah. You know. It's not people I would put on uh, Sports Illustrated. I could definitely oh, yeah, see she's you. cute. I could definitely, oh, yeah, that she's cute. But, oh, I mean, okay. again, um, I wonder what her competitors That's the hill like. right there, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't it. look that crazy right there, but when and no, they have those camera shots where you're going You can down. tell by the way people are hiking up. They're all at like an angle just to hike up. It's Bro, crazy. Oh, yeah. they, I, you watch them. You can't, you cannot, it's impossible to run down without falling. I've never everybody seen it. Yeah, everybody rolls and yeah. falls. It's that steep for sure. Yeah, there's no way. Like you got to be some kind of weird like cat ninja. Is that on your bucket list, Justin? I mean, if somebody were to say, hey, man, we're going to fly you out, like, I, I may consider it. Careful. We have a oh, big Oh, wow, bro. You, but, almost, you, almost, yeah, you almost put it out there. Yeah, careful. But I'll, You should know by now. We got we got people everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So random person's like, I just happened to put those events on, oh, Justin. Man. We'll get you out here. Hey, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's, it's kind of up my alley. I think <clears> it would be great for Mind Pump if you- I would definitely hurt myself, though, which would not be good. No, I don't know. Did you guys- uh, pretty did, tough. Did either one of you guys read that article that's going around right now on the cancer treatment? I did. Immunotherapy, really interesting. It was only, I think, 18 people, but every single person went into remission. So basically with the 100%, treatment- 100%, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, here's the thing with cancer is that you often will see these like really exciting, promising thing, and then it doesn't really you know kind of work itself out. Yeah. But this is exciting because it's this new technology, and what they did basically is through this technology, they teach your immune system to be more aggressive against cancer, hmm. and that's exactly what happened. And People went into comp everybody, hundred percent cure rate. Essentially, That's so awesome. I mean, yeah, just to it. see little glimpses of hope like that. Yeah. Now, there's great. a high rate of like al allergic mm -hmm. reaction and stuff like that from it because it obviously heightens your immune system. Yeah. So my fear would be: Do you cure cancer, but then create autoimmune? Now issues? you have an overreactive. Yeah, yeah, but come on. Would you rather have system? an autoimmune issue or die of cancer? I well, mean, of course. Right? I mean, look at our current treatments with cancers: yeah. chemo. Yeah. It's like this. This will kill your cancer, and you know, maybe yeah. you. What type of um, cancer was it? Was it de all different types, or I, I believe so. I can look it up. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think it. I think they were all. And did it say like what stage they were in? Mm. Yeah. Uh, like, no. Obviously, the, the doubt they were like stage four, and then went into remission, right? No, early, no. early, early onset. No, I don't know. So, oh, twelve patients. Sorry, 12, 12 patients who received this experimental treatment. Hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's six months of of immunotherapy treatment, and they all went into remission. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna find um, in our lifetime. I think we will. Wow, I really do. You know what the challenge is? There's a lot of, of course, people out there. Oh, we, we we're not gonna ever cure cancer because we make so much money treating it. Baloney. If a pharmaceutical company discovered the cure for cancer, they would become the richest pharmaceutical company of all time. Of Bottom line. Uh, yeah. So that's baloney. Yeah. What it is 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 an extremely complex disease. Uh, two different cancers can be two completely different things. It's your own cell. So how do mm -hmm. I kill your cells without killing you? Yeah. Um, it's it's very, very challenging. And then here's the other thing. One of the downsides of having a regulatory system like the FDA or in other countries you have other regulatory systems, obviously they're put in place to protect us. But the problem is the cost that it takes to introduce a drug, make it through trials, and then hit the market is so expensive that if you're a pharmaceutical company 
and you have options of an experimental treatment that could potentially cure cancer or a new type of chemo, and we know chemo can kind of work, we're going to invest in the thing that we think will get a return, and we're not going to do these experimental new types of, of treatments. So that's what ends up happening is you don't get yeah. – so you get a lot of opiate painkillers. You get a lot of chemo-type you know, therapies for cancer, and nothing really groundbreaking because the cost – it's just so high. It's too great. Yeah. It's just too great. Yeah. So, but like I said, I think I, I from what I've been reading uh, about this new immunotherapy type treatment, this isn't the only drug. There's lots of drugs now going down this path. I think we'll solve it in our lifetime, hopefully. Yeah. So that would be awesome. Hey, you got to check out Organifi. They're one of our longest running sponsors. They make products for daily wellness, active lifestyle, immunity, brain health, beauty, and energy. All their products or most of their products are plant based organic. Great stuff. I love their plant-based protein. It tastes good. I can't have dairy, so it's my go-to source of high-quality protein. Go check them out. Head over to mind, excuse me, head over to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump for a discount. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Brittany from British Columbia. Brittany, how can we help you? Hi there, guys. Um, thanks for having me on. Um, I've been listening for uh, a number of years, so about four or five years now. Um, so it's pretty exciting for me to be uh, here and ask some questions. So thanks for that. Um, I'm turning 40 next week. Uh, so my question sort of comes at this time. It's very strange for me. I'm a probation officer, so I work in an office uh, all day. And I don't really get out too much. I've been working out real for about 12 years, um, in the mornings mostly, and did my hour or whatever. And uh, for about six years or so, I've been lifting weight. Um, but at work last week, uh, we had to move some furniture around. And there was a filing cabinet to move and things like this. And I was unable to move these on my own. When my coworker next to me, who doesn't work out, uh, doesn't lift weight, uh, maybe runs a little here and there and, you know, chasing around her children, moves this thing with some struggle, of course, but managed to do it. And so my question is sort of around the area of how can I get more of this practical strength where I can lift furniture or, you know, haul myself over a fence if I needed to. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really great, know? really great question. So a couple, couple things I want to address here with that. Um, one is, be very careful comparing yourself to other people because there's such a wide degree of, you know, genetic strength. And I mean, I've had, I've been working out since I was 14 and I can't tell you how many times I've had employees or new members come to the gym and just outlift me almost right out the <laughs> gate. So, so there's that. There's also, you know, you might have days you're less strong than other days. So really the only fair thing to compare yourself to is to yourself. Now, the second party question is how do I increase my practical strength? Getting stronger generally in the gym will have some carryover to real life, but really it's the exercises that are compound gross motor movement that are going to give you the most carryover. So deadlifts and squats and overhead presses, and then doing exercises that are not so conventional like mm -hmm. um, farmer walks or rounded back carries, like carrying a sandbag, Zercher that squats. kind of stuff. Yeah. Zercher squats. Like there's a lot of carryover to those exercises to, um, you know, what you're talking about. A good program for that, by the way, Map Strong is one of the best programs we have for applicable strength. And the Maps Performance would be the other one. Those so are the two I was thinking. Those about. are the two mm -hmm. programs that I would say, if, if you're looking for that kind of carryover real world strength, those are the ones I would, yeah. I would go for. Yeah. What did your workouts uh, consist of for the most part? Like, has it just been all machines or, or you know, hypertrophy based? No, actually, I'm totally in my house. I've been working out at home for years because I, I don't like to go to the gym at five o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. I prefer to just not have to do my hair or anything before I go there. <laughs> and um, so I've been, for the past two to three years now, I've been doing your guys' programs, actually. Um, so I'm doing anabolic right now. This is my second time running through that. I've done performance and um, aesthetic as well. Are you, so you've done performance already? Yeah. Okay, great. Because if I, I listening to your question, I would run performance and then strong. I mean, based off of what you're trying to get out of it, I think those two programs are some of the best programs for that. I think the performance is going to address 
uh, the multi-planar movements and I think uh, anti-rotational stuff that you're going to get from that. Uh, and then for strong, you're going to get some of the things that Sal was talking about, rounded back lifts, searcher squats, stuff like that. Yeah. Are you are you stronger in your workouts? Do you feel stronger in your workouts than you did, let's say, two, three years ago, generally? I think I do. Okay. But I don't really feel like my weight hasn't really gone, like my weight hasn't really gone up that much. Okay. But um, you've, been, you've been working out so. for so long that that's understandable. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. you can't have those kind of beginner gains. Uh, forever, but but at the very least, you don't feel weaker in your workouts, like significantly. No. Okay. No. You know, let me look. Let me tell you a story, okay, Brittany. I've told this before on the podcast, but I remember this is like the first time I learned just how specific strength is, or at least the first time I, I it was revealed to me. I was I don't know. I think I was sixteen or seventeen years old, and my grandfather from Sicily was visiting our family. So my grandfather at the time was in his uh, either his late sixties or seventies. And he's been working manual labor, I mean, his whole life, poor Sicilian, right? And he came and my dad at the time owned a construction company. And so it was the summer and I would go with my dad for to help him. And my grandfather was no way in hell was he going to stay at home while we all went. So he went to go help us, okay? And we were mixing cement. And I'll never forget my, I don't know, 70-year-old grandfather just smoking me. Now, consider I had been working out by this point for like three years in the gym. I'm a teenager, full of energy. And my 70 something year old grandfather literally was crushing me with carrying buckets of sand and mixing cement. And, you know, I couldn't believe it. I told my dad and I was like, this is crazy. And he goes, well, you go, he's all, this is the stuff your grandfather has been doing forever. So he's good at it. He's got technique. He understands how to move these things. So there's a lot of skill that's involved with strength as well. So if somebody, for example, moves furniture a lot, they're going to be better at moving furniture than someone who lifts weights at a lot, a lot typically. So that's another thing to to consider. But ultimately, you can't compare yourself to other people. You have to – it's not fair. You have to just compare yourself to yourself. And if you're strong still in your workouts, you're not seeing a decline in strength, especially as you enter into your 40s. I mean, you're doing pretty good. So Now, do you have MAP Strong? You said you had performance. Do you have MAP Strong? I don't. We'll send that to you, Brittany. So you'll have access to that, and you'll mm -hmm. be able to do something different. It's, it's a great program. It's different from the other ones. And it's a great strength building program, especially for like kind of odd functional lifts. Great. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's a, that's a fun one. I mean, do you guys, how many times have you guys felt that where you're like, I'm the gym guy. And then you go do something with someone. You're like, oh, yeah, you just get going humbled immediately. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it's, uh, she, she did say something that um, I want to address <clears throat> because actually last night, Katrina and I were just having a conversation about her training routine right now. And she's getting, we're getting ready to go to Mexico in a few weeks. And she's, you know, asking me like, look, you know, let's, let's ramp it up. Like, what should mm -hmm. I start doing? Yeah, yeah. And even after all these years we've been together, her listening to every single mind pump ap episode, the, she still has the, you know, should I start cutting my calories and start picking up the movement yeah. and cardio yet? Mm -hmm. And I asked, and I had, and she's been consistently going since January, like consistently four times to five times a week. She's been lifting and she's following our programs. And you guys eat healthy. And everything, <clears throat> yeah. Right. So that's all she's on. And she's in pretty good shape. She's just wanting the next level. Right. And I said, well, before you, before you start to cut calories, when was the last time that you really ramped up your intensity and in your lifting? She mm -hmm. goes, well, what do you mean? Yeah. And I said, well, I've, I've watched you lift and you're training, but I, I see you lifting weights. Not pushing yourself. That's right. I yeah. see you lifting weights that are lighter than I've seen you lift before, which is good because we're coming off of you not really being consistent not that long ago. And so I think I advised you that way. Just get back in the motion, start lifting again. But before I would start cutting calories, why don't you just really start to push the weight? Mm -hmm. And she's like, you know, you're right. I haven't. I've been just kind of, I mean, I'm training and I, you know, and I get a nice little pump and like a little bit of a sweat, but I'm not, my training intensity hasn't really increased this whole time since I've been training January. So she said something that, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to ask her to go a little bit deeper, but sometimes this is happens and it, and it happens. It's more common with my, my female clients. It's more common seeing it with my wife is, you know, uh, you, you can get in this like routine of like following a program like ours and just moving the same weights. Yeah. Well, especially when you're working out at home. That's right. And this is, I had the same conversation, uh, you know, with Courtney's wall. It was just one of those things where w when you, 
get into the groove and you're like, man, I'm so consistent, but uh, you start like gravitating towards that same weight. So you see what's the, you know, itemized for your workout for the day. And then you just grab the weights you always grab. That's right. And it just becomes sort of like this routine instead of really pushing yourself outside of that progressively overloading, which then, you know, pushes for that change in your physique, that change in your strength. So yeah, sometimes you really do need that nudge uh, to 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 move it forward. That was the exact, the exact advice I said to Katrina was before we cut calories. So what I want you to do, because I haven't seen you do this, track your protein. I know you've been eating good, but have you made sure consistently you're hitting your protein intake every single day? And I want you to push the weight. Give me that for the next two weeks, and then I'll adjust. And watch what happens. And watch what happens, and yeah. then I'll adjust from there. And the truth is, more often than not, when you've been working out for years and years and years, it's good to train in a consistent way. That's where right. You don't beat yourself up. But interjecting these two, three, four week periods of higher intensity and pushing. I mean, that's how, get, that's how yeah. you get your body to continue. Well, especially when, when you're want, leveling off, yes, you, you need that. Especially when you're wanting to see progress. Yeah. If she came to me and said, am I doing a good job, hon? I'd say, yeah, you're doing great. We're eating healthy. We're making a good choice. We still have some flexibility. Yeah. We had pizza the other night. Like, And you're training four or five days a week. You're moving good weight. But if you, want, you're, if you tell me, hey, I got Mexico in three weeks, and I'm wanting to make moves. I want to see change. I want to bring a great bikini mm-hmm. body. I want to take the next level. Well, okay, well, and before I go, hey, cut your calories, hey, pick up cardio or something like that, because I know you care about the muscle that we've built, let's push the intensity in lifting. Let's mm-hmm. try and get a little stronger right now. Make sure you hit your protein intake. Let's let's put some weight on the bar a little bit or slow down tempo. There's other ways to progressively overload to Justin's point. So that that's what we should do first before we just go straight yeah. to cutting. But again, at the end of the day, uh, it really isn't fair to compare yourself against sure. someone else because sure. there's such a wide oh, yeah. degree of everybody needs to hear that. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I've, I've seen it so many times myself and it's like, it's not fair for me to look at someone else, but like, why is that person <laughs> lifting so much to me? I've been it's working out for some, yeah, it, it is, it. Yeah. but it's a, uh, it's a path to like, you're just going to end up hating things. Right. Our next caller is Cameron from Washington. Cameron, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going dudes? Thank you for taking my call. You got it. Yep. Yeah. So my question is every 22 year old's magic question. How do I build muscle if for summer to look awesome and to look better than my friend who I'm in a competition <laughs> with? Yeah. Uh, to look, to look buffer. Uh, so yeah. And the email question I had, it's essentially three months to put, put on as much lean mass as possible. And my, essentially what I want to know is, what I need, what do I need to know nutritionally and, uh, programming. So right now I'm in maps anabolic, uh, just got done with phase one. Today's actually the beginning of phase two. I'm also running the no BS six pack formula alongside it. So, uh, by the time I'm done with anabolic, I'll have six more weeks to follow up with another program. So, uh, what would you guys suggest? We're, Are we're, you going to sabotage your friend? I was just going to say, there's two ways to do this. <laughs> yeah, right, We can play dirty. You can look better or you can make him look worse. But either way. Uh, are you are you looking just for mass or do you want lean muscle? Uh, lean muscle. Um, per- preferably lean, lean muscle. Okay. Don't want to yeah, get, get super ballooning, you know? Getting shredded is going to make you look that way. That's what I mean. That's Always. Yeah. So to me, the focus I would be on right now, because this is a, sh- a small amount of time. I mean, maybe for a month, I put you on like a short bulk, and then the following two months, we we cut. Yeah. So, uh, but it, where's your body fat percentage? Any idea right now? So we both tested our body fat percentages uh, using the new U.S. Navy method, which is just waist and neck circumference, and it puts us both at like 20 ish percent body fat, which not the most accurate in the world. I know. Okay. So do you have a, so 20% for a guy, you, you basically, you don't have any abs. You got kind of a little bit of a belly. Is that accurate? Cause that, that body fat test sounds kind of interesting. Yeah. I got a little bit of flab in the stomach area, but okay. like my back and arms are lean. Well, Adam, Adam's on point then. If you, if you got lean in, in a three month period, the most dramatic change in how you appear is going to be getting lean. So I would do maps and a box. Perfect. Do mm-hmm. the three foundational workouts. Make sure you do the tr- the trigger sessions on the off days, hit one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And I would keep yes, your, I would keep your calories just below maintenance. So whatever your maintenance calories are, I'd bring it down maybe two, 300 below that for the next three months. Hopefully, the idea is you build some muscle and burn some body fat. I mean, three months is a long time. I would actually probably... So you said you have six... After you finish anabolic, we'll have six weeks, right? Yes, sir. So, I mean, 
I I may I may finish anabolic in like a maintenance and the, or even a little bit of a surplus sometimes and then actually do the cut for the last six weeks when you switch programs. Switch, so a more of aggressive cut for yeah, six weeks. Yeah, I mean you're going to switch programs and then go to a, go to a cut and then run that, that run that for six weeks because I, he's 185. I don't think he's the the body fat person. I mean you're if he was really overweight then I would say run him through a cut for that long, but. I think I think you could probably run anabolic, keep your calories at a at a healthy place, not trying to cut yet, and then when you switch to the next program, which I either performance or aesthetic would be fine post that post that program, that's when I would transition into your cut, and then I would run your cut for six weeks. Yeah, are you doing any cardio right now? Uh, no, sir. I work construction, so I get step I. I get more than enough uh, steps in a day, uh, cardio wise. Oh, good. Well, then, then what I would do is just the final two weeks is I would start to get some cardio in there. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Do you do you know how many calories you're eating every day? Are you tracking? Uh, yes. Um, I'm doing that unfortunate thing where you're good tracking five days out of the week, and then the weekends. Uh, um, oh, there's your problem. <laughs> a little off. Yeah, yeah I that's know. why I figured. Tighten uh, that up. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So if you're in a 500 calorie deficit Monday through Friday. And then you do what a lot of people do on the weekend and you go, oh, I just ate a little more or whatever. You'll erase it easily, very easily. In fact, some people actually yeah. go and end up in a surplus because of Saturday and Sunday. So you need to track every single day. And that right there alone, that just will. the weekends, is going to tighten everything and, up. And honestly, that may be just you following maps to a T, committing to yourself, I'm going to track on the weekends and stay consistent on the weekends too. Uh, and then transitioning to another program after that, following that all the way, you should lean out. That I mean, that's it right you, there. I mean, you 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 should. It's I and I'm assuming if you don't track on those two days, are you still allowing yourself like a drinking night or pizza and beer? I mean, is that happening right now? You're 22. I wouldn't be surprised if you are. E e you yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, bro. You're, you're if a, you if you want to win this competition, you want to look better than your buddy. You you just yeah. you got to be the one who's willing to sacrifice yeah, that shit right now. On, yeah, I mean Absolutely. it's that. I mean that right there in itself. If you just literally, I mean, we don't even got to get crazy here. We don't got to get all technical and no, that's it right there. Yeah, just just tighten up the weekends and be the one who's willing to sacrifice that for the next couple of months. And that in yeah. itself, you will lean out and build muscle. Hit feed yourself. Hit your protein intake. Stay on top of your diet on the weekend. Cut out all the garbage that you know you don't need to be doing already, and and you will. You'll lean out, bro. Did, are you? Are is there is there money on the line? Did you guys bet something? Uh, just our pride. Okay, well that's that's <laughs> that's worth more money. Yeah, that's a lot. Right Get them, there. Make them wear a chicken suit or something. Man. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's a big deal. No, hey, listen, hey, Cameron. I'm telling you right now. I've worked with so many people. Right, it, the weekend. Yeah. People think, ah, oh, five days during the week. I'm perfect. Saturday and Sunday. I'm kind of off. It's not that big deal. When I have them tracked, they end up in a surplus at the end yeah, of the week. Yeah. That's it, how it big of a difference. From you real quick. Yeah, yeah, don't try Especially to like drinking. eyeball it. You'd be surprised just how far. Just tracking the weekend, I bet you that that alone is going to make all the difference in the world. Have you heard me talk about, and I don't know if you do this too, do you also, if you take a day off of lifting, is it also on the weekend too? No, I I always um, lift. I have more time to lift on the weekends okay, anyway, good. so... Okay, good. Yeah, okay. that's good. Yeah, just tighten the diet up on the weekend, bro. Okay, track it. Just be more consistent than he will. You'll beat him just from that. Yeah. Just following the programming and then running right into another program afterwards and staying... So I've, go ahead. I have a question pertaining to the next program. Would you guys suggest... I know uh, typically you go performance after anabolic. Just that uh, different stimulus, do you think? Because um, aesthetic is... I it, it mean, it's in the name. It's more aesthetic focus, but performance because it's such a different um, stimulus than anabolic. Would that still just like keep the muscle and yeah. like, no, as, like as alongside doing the cardio, like you said? Yeah, considering the work that you do, I think you'll get better results of performance. I think going from anabolic to aesthetic with construction, you might actually be doing too much volume, to be honest with you. So go with performance. I think you'll get better results. Yes, sir. You got it, man. Mm -hmm. Thanks for calling in. Of course. Good luck, uh, man. Real quick, uh, just want to say, real quick, um, if you don't mind, uh, the obligatory, you guys are awesome type of thing. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate everything you guys do out there. Sal, or Sal, you talk about how you're thankful for the power lifters you met when yeah. you were a little kid. I feel the same way when I was introduced to you guys, to your guys' podcast. Oh, I am you. very thankful for everything Red. you guys do. Appreciate it. Cameron, awesome. if thank you don't you. have Thanks performance, I've got to say this, by the way. If you don't have performance, we're going to send that to you, okay? Oh, I got it. Okay. I got it. Okay. Appreciate okay. it. Yep. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. You got it.
Yeah, I, I, uh, people don't realize. I, I would literally have clients do this all the time. And then we would, I mean, think about 500 calorie deficit, which is a, that's a standard deficit mm -hmm. for body fat loss, right? Five days a week, you end up with 2,500 calorie deficit. Saturday and Sunday, people are like, ah, I go off a little bit. And I would have them track. And we would It'd end up like with a like a thousand extra at know? the end of the week. Yeah. You know, it, it's so, it adds this up was, this and was, estimating it's impossible. This was Easily. me. This was me all through my 20s as a trainer. And I remember as a as trainer, a fitness expert. I, yeah, and I actually remember this is how naive I was as a trainer. Even uh, I actually believed at that point in my career that the only thing that separated me—this is actually what drove me to anabolics. I believed that the only thing that separated from me from the guys that were shredded on the magazines were they were running anabolics and I wasn't. Mm. I was I my training and diet was so dialed Monday through Friday, and in my head I really didn't fuck off that much on the weekends. Yeah. that it couldn't be that it had to be these guys are on anabolics and that was what drove me to first yeah. messing with anabolics yeah. and i learned the hard way that it wasn't that because i didn't get great results just by taking anabolics it wasn't until the body bug and i had to wear that and i started actually tracking my food so eye-opening right? and it yeah. blew my mind now he says he works out on saturdays and sundays what i found out about myself was so I, if I were I worked as a trainer, so many times I was up at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning during the week. Saturday and Sunday, I slept in until nine or ten in the morning, mm -hmm. and then that's also the day that I would kind of uh, I'll get around. I finally ate at like ten or watch eleven. Football for, or watch football, watch basketball. Maybe I'll have some pizza. Drinking. Like, yeah. And in, and in my head, I was I was not, and I didn't think I was going that over. But what I didn't realize was Monday through Friday. I was burning like 5,000 calories because how much I was moving on Saturday and Sunday, I was burning like 2,000. And eating more. And eating more. So it was like way flipped and just simply make, and, and that was what, and I've given this advice on the podcast before. All of a sudden I, I said, okay, because I already automatically have good Monday through Friday and I've, I've dialed that in for so long, I'm now going to just focus on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday are now going to be, I'm, I made a goal for myself that these are going to be my perfect days now. And I didn't say to myself, I can never have pizza again. I can't have a beer with my friends again. I didn't say that. I said, I'm just going to make Saturday and Sunday my most perfect days. I'm going to get up. I'm going to exercise on those days. I'm not going to take the days off. I'm going to make those the most dialed days nutritionally. And then if I want those other things during the week, I'll have it. But you know what happened, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. You don't end up doing those things during it the week. It cleaned up yeah. everything. Yep. Yeah. Plus construction, I mean, this is my experience. They just tend to have, I mean, like what do they call door uh, car dash burritos and you know we take, <laughs> take the, the frozen burrito you put on the car dash and yeah, then, bro, by lunchtime by lunchtime it's, yeah. it's cooked and everything I mean just some of the worst diets that I've ever worked with were people yeah. in, in or you got the roach coach you know that comes by yeah, and you just dude. order nasty food yeah and, and they get cookies. away with it to some extent right but just not not the best diets no our next caller is Vincent from Utah what's up Vincent how can we help you hey what's happening Vincent Hi. hey how's it going guys so yeah um so I've been listening to Mind Pump for probably over a year. Uh, I got to say, Mind Pump has single-handedly helped me realize my passion for personal training. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, I, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be training right now. So thanks so much. Cool. Even nice. though I started working a few uh, weeks ago at a big box gym, uh, all the content you guys have put out has made me feel like I have years of experience. So thank you so much. That's Excellent. awesome. Cool. So... I'm trying to start working with a client who has had gastric bypass surgery and has lost a lot of weight, but they want to still lose another 30 to 40 pounds. She says that uh, she's way more active now than before the surgery. She's like walking every day and she's been doing some light <clears throat> weight training, but she says she wants to do get into heavier weight training and uh, she wants to lose the extra weight. So for a fat loss client, I would based on what you guys have taught, I would probably uh, boost the metabolism slowly, increase calories, but she can only eat a thousand calories a day. So I'm just kind of wondering how would we approach this in a more sustainable way? Is it even possible to boost the metabolism in this kind of a situation? Yeah, it, it's mm -hmm. possible, but mm -hmm. it's harder. Yeah, we, hard. I, we all have a lot of experience with this because we all managed a gym right that used to street, get, yeah. yeah, across the street from a facility that would do this. So I'd get clients and you know Adam and Justin too. We'd get clients that yeah. had this procedure. It's more challenging, so she's gonna have more challenge absorbing nutrients. So she's probably already supplementing quite a bit. And obviously, the procedure is effective. And the reason why it's effective at weight loss is it makes it hard to eat. So my best advice for you is to take it slow. Focus on getting her stronger for now. Sometimes what that does is that increases the appetite enough to where the person can kind of eat a little more. 
And it really, she's going to have to focus on eating throughout the day, very small meals throughout the day. So increasing calories might be less of eating bigger meals and more of adding more liquid calories sometimes, like protein shakes, meal replacement shakes, or just adding snacks. You know, I hate to do this. For, man, I don't recommend this to most people, but in this situation, it's a bit unique. Adding small, you know, additional calories in between the meals that she's currently well, doing. Well, especially, yeah. especially protein focus, because one of the things that I would notice with these these clients is after they do the surgery, uh, they now they can only eat a thousand, but a lot of times they still have the bad eating habits. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So they still it's the same food, just less. Yeah, just way less. Right. So they're not they're still not making good nutrient dense choices, and they're not targeting protein like the same. So the same advice. I'm giving to this client as I'm giving to my average client who I'm trying to boost their metabolism and get them to focus on eating protein and stuff because they still have the same, they still gravitate towards the same type of foods. They just only eat a thousand calories worth and they lose weight. So then it gets justified in their head that it's okay for them to eat that way. So a lot of the conversations I'd be having around is like, what, what are, what are our th a thousand calories? You know, where are we getting our thousand calories and then trying to push their or her in that direction of or it's a her, right? Did you yeah. I don't know if you made that clear. Yeah. So I would put her push her in the direction of making sure that they're protein focused meals. And we may have to do what Sal's saying, which is the shakes and bar route because they're lower calories and they're easier for them to consume. Easy to digest. Yeah, that know. was the first thing I would do is I had when I would work with people like this, is I would have them just add we would start with adding a thirty gram protein shake. You know, whey protein usually if they can tolerate dairy well. It's thin. It's easy to digest. You can mix it in minimal water even, so it's like not a lot of volume. And I would have them either sip on that for over the course of an hour, because sometimes even that is too much, especially right after the procedure, um, or just drink it after the workout. And, that, and then we would start with that. Like, let's just mm -hmm. add 30 grams of protein and whey protein and keep eating what you're eating. Adam, what Adam said, though, is ultimately – what you want to focus on. I can't, I mean, I literally, I would see the, I would have these clients, they would eat less, but I would see what they were eating. And it was like, uh, it's all processed know, carbs. Yeah. Like a yes. breakfast sandwich from McDonald's or, you know, a baggage. It was like the same stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Or even candy said. and stuff. It was just, yeah. they, they yeah. just, their stomach had shrunk so much that they just couldn't, they couldn't physically eat or binge it. Yeah. And so they would lose weight. And because they were losing weight, they, they would go, oh, I'm okay. I'm eating all right. And yeah. I'm taking all the supplements the doctor's giving yeah, me. It's like a hall pass. Yeah. yeah. And then I'd go in and I'd look and I'm like, Jesus, we're only having like 10 grams of protein a day. Like we've, we've got to get more protein than this in your diet. So yeah, I think Sal's place of starting with the the whey shake with water is such a good place. And if they can't take whey, then doing like a an Organifi type of shake, right? Yeah, that's that's yeah, plant protein. It's a Organifi is the best one for that. Yeah, for sure. so if they, so, go that route, and yeah, you're not going to be able to you're not going to take this client from a thousand calories to three thousand calories, right? And and but you can slowly increase that, and more importantly, make better choices, and then continuing to yeah. follow one of the programs and sending that signal to build muscle. Yeah, but fo really focus on getting her stronger. You know, yeah, with the basic movements, that's where she's going to see the most, the best results. Right. Strength. Um, so if we have time, I have one last question for another, med another client with another medical condition. Okay. All right. So I just acquired a new client who has PCOS. Are you guys familiar with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So obviously she, she is actually very strong. She's actually power lifted in the past, but her issue obviously affects her hormones. And um, because we know that they regulate pretty much everything in the body, fat loss, muscle gain. Mm -hmm. What would be the best approach for someone with PCOS if their goal is fat loss? All right. This is general. Okay. I'm going to give you, because it could be very different from person to person. Also, we're not doctors. I do have some experience working with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, and a, a lot of it, uh, oftentimes I respond very well from eliminating or reducing uh, dramatically the sugar intake and or carbohydrate. I wouldn't go keto. But oftentimes, reducing or eliminating sugar and bringing carbohydrates down seems to work better. This isn't true for everybody, though. So what I'm going to recommend is that you find them a good functional medicine practitioner. Um, one of my favorite, Dr. Becky Campbell is really good. She's got a great podcast called Health Babes. You can refer this client to that podcast. Really good. We also have a wellness uh, or holistic forum now that's free. Yep. Um, and what's the name of it on Facebook, Doug? I'd always forget. MP Holistic Health. Health. MP Holistic Health. Have them sign. It's free. So anybody can go on and we're keeping it free for now. Have them go on there every week. 
uh, or I believe every week, or, every, or, or is it twice, twice a month? Twice a month, the Thank doctor you. goes on there, does live there questions that they're answering in the audience, and then every day, the staff is on there actually answering people that are messaging inside there. So yeah, and it's super absolutely- Super valuable resource. Yes. That, that, so that's where I actually haven't had a client with this. So I would have deferred out. I would have deferred out to probably Stephen Cabral and the forum that we have, which this is part of the reason why- We've partnered up with him is to help clients like this because answers. this is even yeah. above my pay grade. Yeah, but again, I have I do have some experience, and usually it was like cutting sugar, reducing some carbohydrates from a dietary standpoint, um, and they would see and we would see some pretty good results. But this is a, this is a situation where you want some individual attention. So, and as a trainer, Vince, I'm gonna tell you this, and I've said this to many trainers. One of the most valuable things you can do is have a trusted network mm -hmm. of practitioners that are experts in areas that you're not, that you can send people to. What you don't want to try and do is be the guy who has all the answers because you're not going to have all the answers. So it'd be, you know, my advice to you is find a good functional medicine practitioner you develop a relationship to that you can refer to, have a good, you know, correctional exercise specialist, have a good hormone specialist. That way, when you run into these situations, you could say, oh, I got the right person for you and I work with them and then we'll work together to help solve this for you. And it just makes you so valuable. You got all that with us. That's part yeah. of why we built that. It's, yeah. it's for our, to support our trainers and our community. So make sure you, if you're not in also the hormone one, you should be. So those are two free forums. And as a trainer, there's, it's just a wealth of knowledge for absolutely free for you. Yeah. I'm actually in the, the, the private forum too. Oh, awesome. perfect. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, I actually have a lot of your programs. Cool. Um, prime anabolic performance aesthetic split kettlebells for that aesthetic so um yeah I'm, i feel like i'm i'm like i said i'm only three weeks in but i feel like i'm set for the next decade or two all right man well good awesome yeah, yeah. Good. good keep doing it yep appreciate your call thank you so much you got it yeah. I, you know what's funny is that i i hear so many i've had so many people message me and say that they became trainers because because of us and we usually so tell people it's the hardest, not, yeah, like, not a place to make a lot of money. Like, I don't know. It's super hard. Real it's passionate. Yeah, yeah. I know. So we That's must, great, though. I mean, it just shows that there's a lot of people out there that are passionate about helping others. Regard, that's what it is. Regardless. And I we, think they hear our I passion. I think we make it clear that there's not a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> a lot I mean, of money. You can make a living, right? But, but I mean, uh, this is just hard. another example of, of highlighting the resources that we have out there for everybody. I mean, that's um, what we're trying to do because yeah. uh, we're not functional medicine practitioners. No, and no. we can I can give you you know, what I've seen in some mm -hmm. of my clients, but I'm not Dr. Stephen Cabral. I'm not Dr. Becky Campbell. I'm not oh, yeah, and all the tests you can refer them to and just get that kind of like real, like, uh, 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 uh man, what am I trying to not subjective, but objective. Yes. Data. Yeah, yes. 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 And because it can be different from, I mean, usually, you know, it's like, Oh, testosterone is too high in this woman and sugar affects them a particular way, yeah. and, but it's not always that way. So our next caller is Gabriel from Kentucky. Gabriel, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Um, Great. That's good. Uh, so I wanted to know how I could optimize uh, my total testosterone. Um, I'm 19 years old, and I recently got some lab tests, and my total came out to 323 nanograms per deciliter, and my uh, uh, percentage of free testosterone was 2.8. Um. And about a week ago, I retook the test and I retook the lab and my testosterone went up 26 points and my uh, free testosterone has almost uh, doubled in a way. It's 2.34. Okay. All right. So you're, you're 19 years old. So I'm going to cover the common offenders for, for people your age with, uh, who, have, who are experiencing lower testosterone. Okay. So, uh, number one, way too much masturbation. <laughs> that increases testosterone. I was getting there. No, no, no. That's you're the, busted. Let's you're busted. Go, let's not go there yet. <laughs> let's not go there yet. So, a few different things. Uh, number one, good, consistent sleep every night. Not just most nights, but consistent every night. Nothing will crash testosterone yep. like poor sleep. So, you want to aim for eight hours, but not just eight hours in bed, quality sleep. So, an hour or two before. Turn off your electronics. Um, that's the ideal thing. Or wear blue light blocking glasses. Be okay. consistent with that. Too. Very consistent. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, get sunlight every single day. So don't stay in, you know, on your computer or in your room. Try to get an hour of sunlight every single day. Number three, lift weights. But don't lift weights too often. Um, I see in your question here that you train five to six days a week, um, and you're doing uh, three and times cardio, a week of cardio. Times. Do listen, 
three days a week, full body. That's it. Maps anabolic. Yeah, ma it. Maps anabolic. Three days a week, full body. Uh, how tall are you and what's your body weight? I am 5'11 and I weigh like 205 pounds. Okay. A little bit of cardio is fine. I don't care. That's that's perfectly fine. But lift weights, three days a week, MAPS anabolic, just do that. Keep your protein intake high. Don't get your fat intake too low and, and just eat a general healthy diet. Those things alone tend to make a tremendous difference with testosterone levels, especially for, for young men your age. Because a lot of guys your age, you stay indoors too much. Uh, you're, you're watching a lot of, you know, you're on electronics quite a bit. Sleep is terrible. Um, and that's where you tend to see the issues. So do that for two or three months and then see what happens with your testosterone levels. In my experience, uh, I've worked with kids your age and we've done stuff like this and we've seen them double their testosterone levels. Okay. If you indeed do have hormone issues, uh, you'll know after three months of doing that consistent. And then at that case, I would, I would refer you to a specialist, but not until you do those things. What you don't want to do is go see a specialist if you're not doing those things, because it's really only reflecting your lifestyle. And I see you're already taking vitamin D and zinc and ashwagandha already. Uh, there's not much to yeah. add to what Sal's saying. I think before you go out and spend any money on something crazy or buy any like testosterone booster type bullshit supplements, check all the boxes that he's saying. I think the big one that jumps out to me is the training five, six days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, you, I mean, training maps in a bulk, which we'll send. If you, if you don't have maps in a bulk, we'll send that over to you. Do you have that by chance or no? I do not have that. Okay, so we'll we'll send that to you. Follow Maps Anabolic, and I think uh, that alone. And uh, do you track actually your macros at all right now? Uh, yes. Um, I have a hundred and eighty grams of protein, um, nine hundred to ninety grams of fat, and I'm rocking like two hundred grams of carbs. Okay, that's, that's good balance. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all. Um, so keep doing that. Look at the sleep. Look at the sunlight and and watch the training. Overtraining is uh, also generally a that's offender. what I noticed from you know uh, clients that have been in your age range is just the recovery isn't really a thought. So uh, it's always more is better. And if you even like just pull back a bit, do your three times a week of, of hard lifting, and then allow your body to recover, rest, get good sleep, get good sunlight. You know a lot of this stuff will kind of turn around. And along the lines back on the sleep talk, like, is one of the things I, re I remember when I'm your age, what I was really bad about um, <clears throat> was being consistent, like, with the time that I went to bed. Like, it, it was so, yeah, like, I could easily have one, one night where, and, and just cause I, I would still get six to eight hours, but I'd have one night where I went to bed at midnight, another night where I went to bed at 10, another night I might stay up till one. You're making yourself jet lagged every other day. Yeah. So even though I might be getting six to eight, the six to eight wasn't very quality because mm -hmm. my body wasn't, it wasn't on this clock. It was completely being disrupted all the time. It didn't know when I was supposed to be resting. And even though you might be getting the, the total time, the quality of the sleep might be hurting based off of how inconsistent you might be with the times that you go to bed and you yeah. wake up that simply dialing that in can make a big difference. Also, too. if you, yeah, if you take pre-workout, you take a lot of caffeine, you got to consider all that with like, you know, the timing of that and how much that may be impeding on your actual sleep and the quality of it. Yeah. At your age, typically the body's very responsive to these types of things. And if I'm talking to a 45 year old, it's, I mean, I've, I, we can typically raise testosterone, but I'm usually looking at like a, you know, if I, if I really crush it, 40% increase in testosterone. But at your age, you're, you, you have a tendency to be more responsive. So give that a chance. And then after being consistent, don't judge it until you're consistent with those things for a few months. And then after that, if it's still, you know, if it goes up to 400, barely moves up, then I would go uh, talk to a specialist. Now, you said you already doubled your free testosterone. Was that just from taking supplements and, and paying a little um, attention to those things? What I did was I actually, for my free testosterone, instead of going six, I started going five days and um, I kind of held back on some of the cardio, yeah. um, but I trained more. When I did go to the gym, it was more intense. Yeah. I, I, I Maps anabolic, dude. Yeah. That's the program you got to follow. It'll make a big got difference. It. And and to be honest with you, Maps anabolic has two options. There's there's one option mm -hmm. that's two two foundational workouts a week. And one option, that's three foundational workouts a week. I bet you, just from where you're at now, if you went all the way back down to two, because mm -hmm. you might be already overtrained, that might even be the best option. Seems counterintuitive, but watch how your body responds. Yeah, if you get stronger, if you see yourself getting stronger, you're on the right track. Got it. All right, man. Thanks for calling in, buddy.
All right. Thank you very much, guys. You got it, right, man. Yeah, that's a very common one is the overtraining. And that'll, you know, testosterone is so responsive. Well, especially if he already saw that just by backing off cardio right away, he had a response. Exactly. It's exactly. so funny, like the body trying to tell him. Like, yeah, it's like, knock, knock, knock. Yeah, you're on the right path. Keep going that direction. Yeah. You know? I, two's really, I mean, I don't know. I think he's going down to three. He's He went from six to five. If he goes from five down to three, I think he's going to notice a huge difference. You know what, though? I've trained a lot of, uh, at one point, I had a lot of like kind of teenage clients that were in that like, oh, it's hard for me to gain muscle. And it's like, I would do two, and I train a lot of clients two days a week. It just worked out that way. And if they did an extra day, they would do it on their own. But I'd train, and I'd see like these really good, consistent strength gains very consistently. Shit, I'd train Doug that way for a year before well, he so moved up. Well, I, I agree. Like kids like me or hard gainers like Doug, right, or people that think they're hard gainers like us, that was that was the answer for me. He's all he sounds like he's trying to lean out, right? So he's a little over two hundred pounds. Yeah, because his testosterone though is getting hammered. That's where I'm 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 a little careful. Yeah, no, we I can always add. You know, I, what mean, I mean, I would what I would rather mm. see is cut out all the cardio and go three times a week of training. That's another option. Yeah. I mean, instead of going down to two days of lifting and then still letting him do the cardio, I'd rather say, hey, let's lift three days a yeah. week and drop your cardio completely, or switch your cardio to just walking. Yeah, that's what I, I mean because I think that three days of lifting isn't going to be that bad on him. Just, I'm based off what he's eating. Calorie wise, calorie wise, his macros. He's supplementing. He's says he's getting rest. Like, I don't know. I think that I think they're going down to three. Yeah, but I'll tell you something, dude. You have a 19 year old that tells you, yeah, I'm getting good I, sleep. I mean, I know. <laughs> well, that's, that's why I think we all. Good I think is. we all picked up on that. That's why everybody yeah. kept fucking circling. Yeah. I thought I had good sleep. You know what it was? Is I could get away with crappy sleep. Like yeah. looking back, I did not. Well, that's why I brought up the blacked out. The different because I I <laughs> I thought I got good sleep too because I got six to eight always. But what I realized now is like how in, like I said I could one night I go to bed at two in the morning, another night I go to bed at ten. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, Plus the attitude, right? It's like I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, and I was <laughs> mucking out. On video games for the last three hours of the night, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Can't think I, I was so stimulated trying to go to bed. Like so, yeah. There's a lot of things like that, and yeah. you think as a kid you're doing fine because you feel okay. Totally. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us all on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam, and you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 